I greatly appreciate uh, the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to discuss our country's energy future and specifically the role of the Keystone XL pipeline. And I'm going to reiterate uh, a little bit that the, uh, the leader of this uh, special order has already stated, but I think they're worth reiterating tonight. Due to recent technological innovations, the United States is the number one producer of natural gas in the world today. That's hard to believe if you think back about 20 years ago where the, the naysayers were that where we're going to be. In oil production, we're set to pass Saudi Arabia by the year 2020. This is a long way from the, line, the gas lines of the 1970s where the restrictions at gas stations on how many gallons of gas you could buy or on what day you could buy gas. I can remember going to gas stations and if you were on uh, your letter, you had a letter or a number on the end and they said this is the letter or number you were taking today. And if that, you didn't have it, you weren't buying gas. But today, that's changed. It's changed. Today we are on the cusp of a bright and promising energy future where millions of jobs will be created because of it. We must ensure that the right policies are in place in order to fully realize our great energy potential. Again, that potential is there. The Energy and Commerce Committee has heard testimony and passed numerous pieces of legislation aimed at ensuring America is on the right path to energy prosperity. One of the quickest solutions is to build the Keystone XL pipeline. Thanks to Mr. Terry's leadership on the XL pipeline, we passed a bill to approve it. The expansion of this pipeline will bring additional jobs, income, and investment into the United States. The project will produce up to, as Mr. Terry has already said, 42,000 manufacturing, construction, and indirect jobs. In my home state of Ohio, the project is projected to bring 2,419 jobs by 2015. These jobs will offer high wages, strong benefits, and a resurgence of America's hardworking taxpayers. The project will also produce approximately $20 billion in economic activity from food, lodging, construction equipment, supplies, and other investments during the project development. In my home district, the 5th District, I have visited companies that are going to be making equipment for drilling and parts for large machinery that are going to bring oil from the pipeline. And not too long ago, I was in one company that was very proud to tell me that they're going to be adding on to their, their company today because they're going to be making equipment that will be used in the pipeline and in construction. There's also a company out there that makes parts for the large machinery that's going to be operating up in Canada. Those are jobs in Northwest Ohio, and those are the jobs we want to keep. These are permanent jobs for people looking for good employment. In our committee hearings, we had one panel that was very interesting. On one end of the table, we had representatives from TransCanada. And on the other end of the table, we had an individual who's representing the trades, whose men and women will be actually building this pipeline. And it was very hard for them to understand why we weren't going forward with this project today to put these people to work. Because these people that are out there going to be working are going to make sure that they have roofs over their family's head, food on the table, saving for their kids' education, and yes, putting money away for their own retirement. This pipeline is going to bring about 830,000 barrels of oil into the United States every day. You know, we have a great friend and neighbor to the north in Canada. For every dollar we send to Canada, we'll get about 90 cents back. We send billions of dollars every year overseas for oil to some countries who aren't our greatest friends. As we speak, due to the President's foot dragging, Canada is studying, as Mr. Terry has already alluded, an eastern route across her southern border that would bypass the United States and send her oil to her eastern ports to ship that oil someplace else. What's wrong with this picture? They want to send it south, not east. Talk to them. Another point about the Keystone Pipeline is that it is a $7 billion privately funded project that once that oil would reach its destination in the United States, as Mr. Terry has already said, it will be refined into many products, putting Americans again to work. 
The pipeline is expected to generate more than $585 million in state and local taxes in, the, in those states that the pipeline's route passes. I was a county commissioner for six years, and I know what those local dollars mean to be putting back into local government. Approval of this energy project should not be controversial, but President Obama has, and his administration have made this common sense, shovel-ready project a cornerstone of partisanship and needless delays. 2,000 days have now passed since the Keystone XL pipeline application was filed. This pipeline has undergone more state and federal assessment than any previous pipeline, and every assessment has come back to the same conclusion, that the pipeline will have minimal environmental impact. Further, the Keystone XL pipeline will be the most advanced pipeline in operation, using the most reliable materials and innovative technologies. In fact, the pipeline will include 57 extra safety procedures, which led the U.S. State Department to declare that the project would have a degree of safety over any other. Another benefit, the Keystone XL will provide an additional capacity to our current pipeline infrastructure. And finally, again, to point out what Mr. Terry has already said, that this is about our security, not just energy security, but our national security. Because as the Americans pick up their paper or look on, new, on, on the news in the evening and they see what's happening over the Ukraine, people in Europe are fearful of what's going on because energy is being used as a weapon against them. We want to make sure that we're independent in this country. We want to make sure that Americans can go to bed every night and say, you know what, we can take care of ourselves and with also we can take care of ourselves with oil from a country to the north of us who is a, one of our greatest friends and neighbors. This project has the support of the American people, the United States House and Senate, and it's time for the President to put jobs, community investment, and energy security before politics and approve this pipeline. I thank Mr. Terry for leading this very important energy special order tonight, and I yield back. And I thank, thank the gentleman from Ohio.